what's so interesting about the koanim it's provided um a so a way to look at um the the whole question of the lost tribes. one of the things i explore on the map again in the larger level of jewish ancestry um is the issue of are, are there lost tribes? we hear hear lots of stories about groups in india, groups in the urals um the ethiopians and so forth um the 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 key to understanding this and one of the great and most fascinating discoveries um relates to the koanim but for those of you who are not conversant with the story of the koanim uh, about 15 years ago Carl Skoretsky a then a Toronto nephrologist who since relocated to Haifa and runs the genetic and nephrology program at Technion um got a flash one day when a he's Sephardic and got a flash when when another when another Jew stood up to give the Berkhas koanim at his synagogue and he said you know something if if it's really true that we can track through the y chromosome then this guy and i we both say by our oral tradition that we're descendants of Aaron or maybe a zadokite because this is very unclear by the bible zadokites also might be a separate line of the um of uh, of the koanim but but it's clearly a jewish priesthood line that goes back theoretically to the time of Aaron at least to the time of Moses and Aaron if in fact their stories are not apocryphal and they did live he says we should be able to test this genetically um and he put together this project and they took the uh the the y chromosome tests of of many people who proclaimed that they were um koanim by oral tradition and they found out about 55% of them shared a um a genetic mutation that traced back to the time when if Aaron lived he would have lived so in fact they were related to the same person so at least 55% of the people who claim to koanim share an identical identical not a close an identical ancestor going back 2500 years again a remarkable story of genetic witness to the traditions of Judaism and the Israelites absolutely amazing um why is why is it not 100% paternity mistakes um you know referred to as affairs perhaps in other ways uh or also the fact that there might be m- multiple lines the, the zadokite line that i referred to and during certain periods in jewish history during the Hellen- hellenic period for instance there was some uh ways to kind of wheedle your way into the uh into the koanim that uh, ultimately was clamped down upon after that uh so I, as I, as i mentioned it's really been interesting in in using um that kind of research to along with regular dna research to go after the quest of the lost tribes so i'll just mention a couple of things one thing i like to talk about is anthropologists <laughs> anthropologists think they know what they're talking about genetics has really changed the equation about you can fool an anthropologist sometimes but you can't fool the genes so there was a there was a time for instance back in the late 19 80s you probably you might remember uh I think it was called Operation Exodus when the Ethiopians were rescued and brought to the uh to Israel um because they claimed that they have Jewish ancestry and that they're genetically Jews and so forth uh they've done enough genetic testing now to at, at very least put a huge question mark very very big to suggest that they probably are not genetic Jews that trace back to the Middle East they are probably converts from the 5th and 6th century during a time when the Ethiopian government uh was very very sympathetic to Judaism and embraced it and it ultimately um spread through the culture uh both in the they've done some Y testing uh they've done some uh, female DNA testing some more definitive studies will be out in the next couple of years but but right now it seems like yes they are Jews but they are Jews because they um took on the culture they never went through a formal conversion process probably no less Jewish than most of us here because of our ancestry back to the uh back to the med- early medieval times but they are not genetic Jews like um on the on the Y chromosome Y chromosomal side the male side that stretches all the way back to the Middle East but what about another tribe called the Lemba here's a Lemba and the Lemba had a, the same um tradition as the Ethiopians many of them claim they were of Jewish ancestry a lot of them claim that they were of Jewish ancestry but they were practicing Christians but they still had Jewish rituals and they all talked about it and anthropologists who you saw um easily fooled you used to say very liberal in in their own minds but they'd say very patronizingly oh they probably these lemba probably conflated their folkloric history with a jewish colonialist or maybe a christian evangelical who believes in the, some of the lost tribes myths and they absorbed it into their own culture um and they can't really be jewish 
Um, and they were very condescending about that. Even Stephen um, Jones, a very famous geneticist from, from the UK who, who did a PBS special on this in 1997, 1998, mocked the idea that they could be genetically Jewish. Well, it happens to be this man here is not only a Lemba, he is a Buba. A Buba is the priestly clan of the Lemba and uh, a clan that maintains its Jewishness and maintains its Jewish practices and thinks of itself as still very stridently and coherently Jewish. Well, um, one of the tutor Parfit, Parfit, who had been very instrumental in, um, in writing about the Ethiopian Jews, he's a, he's a Christian, a anthropologist, incredible man from, from England, um, very skeptical of the um, claims of the, the Lemba, uh, paired together with, with, with geneticists uh, Michael Hammer in uh, Arizona, geneticist at the Genetic Anthropology Center in um, London, and they, he went and he took the DNA of uh, the Buba, and not only uh, did they show Kohanim markers, more than 60 to 65 percent of Buba have the same Kohanim marker that is found in a less of a percentage, 55 percent of American and European Jews. The, the, on, for, on the male line, the Buba are more Kohanim, are more co uh, coherently and consistently Jewish than American Jews or um, European Jews, absolutely remarkable. Again, on the female side, they married um, local women, which is why their skin is black, their overall DNA, if they had autosomal tests, would probably be about 98% black. But on that one line that we can trace right now, the Y chromosomal line, the surname line, which for some reason we give huge import to, even though it's just a tiny strand of our DNA, it, it creates our identity, even though, again, the autosomal line, the huge amount of their DNA is almost all African. But, the, but on the male line, the boobas are almost certainly descended of the Semites. Um, Tudor Parfit then went and reconstructed the Jewish, the history with the clues that he now had and found out that they had probably, um, a group of Israelites, Jews, had left Israel uh, in the first, uh, somewhere around the time of, of Jesus, the first century, came over, settled in Yemen, established a city there called Sena. Uh, he went and, and did genetic testing of, the, uh, of, of, of kids there. And it was amazing evidence and, and showed the DNA trail that led down to the coast they, they landed probably near uh, Zanzibar Island, um, not off, far off the coast of Tanzania, went down. And, and what's so interesting here, you see down there where it says the Great Zimbabwe, uh, right on the, uh, what, what is in Zimbabwe? Is, how many of you are familiar with the Great Zimbabwe is? The Great Zimbabwe is the only architectural uh, marvel in Africa um, that really shows any kind of sophistication or understanding of, of, of literally how, how, how uh, you know, what was going to be the future in building. There are really no examples of it. Almost every other culture has one and is literally the pride and joy of black Africa and is the reason Zimbabwe, the name of the country, was named after the great Zimbabwe. And it's considered, you know, when they talk about the great African cultures, they talk about the great Zimbabwe. Um, I, I hate to tell um, Zimbabweans, but it was, the great Zimbabwe was almost certainly built by Jews. <laughs> Um, this has been confirmed and discussed. It's obviously very controversial, but on the male side, again, their overall DNA was quite black by then because we're talking probably 13, 14 centuries. But on the male line, they were built by people who were higher. I know, I know all of you are asking, so are there more doctors and lawyers who are, who are Lemba? I mean, what's the sign that they're Jewish? Um, that, that, that actually is, is, is somewhat true. They are considered a bit of an elite group within the um, black African culture. But these are obviously very controversial and very touchy kinds of things. Things with, with the doses of speculation built in, but these are the kind of questions that are being asked by, um, by geneticists today to try to reconstruct um, genetic and genealogical history. This is the uh, MTDA human migration chart, and uh, the, the reason I, uh, I, I put this is because when you look at the, the, the deep history of, of, of many kinds of societies, you really have to look at the mtDNA because Y chromosomal DNA obviously cannot survive for a long time. So when you're really looking at deep history, almost all of it involves looking at your, um, at your mtDNA. But I think one of, the, one of the points I want to bring home on this is the impact that discovering Israelite ancestry is having on various people. I think one of the most interesting stories that I came across was the story of a priest in Albuquerque, a guy named William Sanchez. Uh, this is in around 2002. Bennett's service had only been in existence for a couple of years. 
and william sanchez saw a story on pbs about sending in your dna for testing and he sent it in, sent a swab in and the reason he was he was piqued by this interest is because he grew up in a hispano community that had all these what now would be called crypto jewish rituals that they did. They covered mirrors when, when someone died and they were um, sitting shiva, but not knowing they were sitting shiva. They uh, would sweep, sweep um, the, uh, some of the dirt in the middle of the room at certain times. Uh, they had a dreidel, which may or may not be of Jewish, that only goes back a few hundred years and maybe a amalgam of a couple of rituals, but things that made him curious about, about why their Hispanic community seemed, their little tight community that he lived in seemed different from other, some of the Christian Hispanos in that community. So he sent in his DNA. This is in the early days when, when again, when FTDNA wasn't that big. And so um, Bennett calls him on the telephone and says, can I please speak to William Sanchez? Because that's all he had was William Sanchez. Bennett actually, when he got some interesting data, he would call people up on the telephone. And uh, the guy says, hi, this is uh, Bill Sanchez. He says, uh, Mr. Sanchez, he says, I don't usually call people up, but when we get some of the data that we got from you, it's pretty interesting, so we decided that we'd give you a call. He says, do you know that you might be descended from priests? And he laughs, he says, oh, yeah, it doesn't make, make sense, I am a priest. And <laughs> stunned silence from, from Bennett Greenspan on the other side. He says, you're a priest? He says, absolutely. He says, um, well, I didn't mean uh, Catholic priests, I meant Jewish priests. And uh, it was an amazing revelation that just struck Father Sanchez as revelatory. And the man has, it, it literally changed his life. He threw himself into genealogical and genetic research. He's had more than 70 of his family members tested. More than 38 of them have either a J1 or a J, which uh, definitely marks them as Semitic ancestry. Um, many of them have direct uh, ancestry that probably indicates that they are Kohanim. He's probably associated a cousin of, of, of Kohanim rather than a direct ancestor. Um, and it's had a dramatic influence on his church as well. <laughs> Hundreds of members of that church now wear this. <laughs> and they go around saying, we are Jews by ancestry and Christians by belief. A fair number of his cousins didn't shake them at all. They are absolutely proud of their Jewish ancestry. The Catholic Church hates it. I was absolutely apoplectic that they're wearing these things and talking about these things. They've introduced Jewish rituals into their mass, things that probably were part of every Catholic mass until it was withdrawn because of anti-Jewish prejudice over the centuries. But probably if Jesus lived, would be proud of them because Jesus was a Jew and they're celebrating the Jewish dimensions to their ancestry. But again, does not sit well with the uh, mainstream Orthodox Jewish, I mean, uh, Catholic movement, but many, uh, at least a half a dozen of Father Sanchez's cousins have either begun formal conversion processes to become Jews or are just openly declaring themselves Jews, recognizing that under Jewish law, of course, they're not. Um, and this is absolutely startling, again, when you come down to the fact that if you did their autosomal DNA, probably it, they're, 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 um, their Jewishness probably represents 20% of their DNA, their Jewish ancestry, their Semitic ancestry, 80% of it is probably a combination of Christians who they've married over the years, and the fact that on the maternal side, remember we talked about how um, Jewish traders and others uh, in, in the uh, early medieval period took on pagan or Christian wives, well most of the uh, Jews who came over the uh, from uh, as a result of the Holy Inquisition, some of them who had converted to Christianity and some of them who founded crypto-Jewish communities in Mexico and elsewhere, ultimately married Native Americans, almost all. And so his, his actual ancestry on the um, female side is Native American. So again, his autos autosomal ancestry, his overall ancestry is only a little bit Jewish, but for, other, for, for people, there's something incredibly powerful about a religion that is tribal, that is, that is a mixture of blood, that is a culture, um, faith. It's not just faith. We are not just a faith-based religion. We are all these things together. And that has an incredible, almost mystical appeal to people and is so powerful that it has transformed the lives of person after person.